Hello guys, GuyCushion9 here, and welcome to Let's Play Fable 2 Knothole Island. In the last episode, we got the final of the three totems, pretty much sold the chieftain to F off, and gave the power of the weather to the people. And me, mostly. Because right now, I'm going to go ahead and use one of these totems, the Sea Sun Totem. Because with this one, I can go ahead and get some of the last of the Knothole Island books that I've missed. And luckily, I've only missed two of them, so hopefully this won't be too long. Granted, I can't really remember what the first book is. I'm kind of going off a guide here, so... But yeah, the, the, this video is just going to be covering a bunch of the extra stuff on this DLC. The first is, of course, going to be the rest of the book. So let me go ahead and find the first one real quick. Oh, it's down here. Huh, okay. Oh, look, there's treasure here. Alright, well, let me go ahead and open this up first, I guess, and then there's the book off in the corner. Hey, <laughs> you crossbow wall. Alright, so anyways, this is going to be book number six. And since we've read five, I think. Let's see. The tribe has been living in the happiest circumstances over a 12 month, changing the weather to suit their needs and never wanting for anything. They grew soft and lazy, and the town elders realized they could not survive without the sort of challenges that would sharpen their senses and toughen their young. They saw the window of the an of, uh, uh, wisdom of the ancient people who had created the totems and decided to return them to the shrine so that once a year they would have to face the proper test and earn their power over the weather. So, yeah, so you can kind of see what happened. They got the uh, um, totems, but then the elders realized that they were starting to get lazy, so they decided to put them back into the shrines to kind of give themselves a challenge. As it were, and apparently somewhere along the way that kind of backfired, but, uh, let's see. You know, I probably should have just gone up here to begin with. Because apparently the last of the books is actually... I'm kind of ashamed I missed this, but then again, I haven't really had a reason to go over here besides that one time. But anyways, over in this little graveyard over here, the book is actually... The final book is actually going to be hidden somewhere around here. And there it is, alright. And that's book eight. So now that I have all the books, I think I can go ahead and start reading them. I probably could go ahead and read seven, but... Well, hold on. Did I ever read five? I'm trying to remember. Let's see. Uh, seven times four eyes. Yeah, I wrote that. All right, let's go to seven. Over the course of the next few centuries, the tribe lived peacefully, though it never grew beyond its first small village. It had minimal contact with the outside world, usually in the form of shipwrecks and passing pirates, barbarian hordes, and the odd tourist crews. They had little interest in the outside world, but more worryingly, it started to lose its fighting traditions. Every year, it became harder and harder to recover the totems from the shrines. So, trouble in paradise. All right, number eight. The day the tribe had long feared eventually came. None of the so-called warriors sent into the shrines were able to retrieve the totems. I told you we should have just kept them last year. Why didn't we keep them back in the shrine? Put them back in the shrines. And we're stupid. We're popular phrases found in the village at time. Anyways, with the island stuck in perpetual winter and none of the inhabitants strong enough to survive the shrines, a local blacksmith set out to create an armor that would protect the wearer against all the trials and dangers one was like to encounter. It was a magnificent suit. It was just one small failing. It was far too heavy for the now weedy and rather useless members of the tribe. They tried to get around this problem by just wearing bits of it each, but even then, gauntlets made hands too light to hit, lift, boots made feet too sluggish to walk, and the helmet made necks too broken to support living heads. <laughs> His pieces were eventually lost in the shrine, so that explains why we were able to find the pieces in there. In the final book, this is the apocryphal and rarely seen last book of chronicling the history of the island. It tells of the greed and megalomania of the latest generation of chieftains, who banned all earlier volumes in the series, save for the first. Most of the books were burned in a giant pyre with pretext of providing warmth, though the author of this tome contends that it was merely a means of robbing the people of their identity, thus making them easier to control. A few of them, however, managed to hide copies of all other volumes around the island. So everything comes full circle, and we kind of understand what, happened, what the hell happened with the uh, chieftains and stuff. But now, since one of them mentioned it, I'm going to go ahead and show this off. Uh, in the clothing section, We're, I'm going to go ahead and show off the outfit that we got as a result of all our exploring. The Knothole Island out, uh, Knight outfit, sorry. Which I always called the Cylon outfit because of that helmet. <laughs> and the game takes a little bit to load. But look at that, I'm all shiny and I have a cape now, yay! And the halo kind of fits in too. Damn, I look bulky too. Jesus. I'm sure you'll be. But well, yeah, this is the entire not whole um, night outfit. 
the only way you can get this, of course, is uh, getting the premium version of the DLC. Otherwise, you just get the boots, I think. But, um, yeah, so no, uh, one of the nice little gifts of this island. Probably the best outfit, honestly, out of all the stuff that you get here. But anyways, there's, uh, well, there's one major thing I want to show off now. If you come over to this building over here, this isn't actually a shop. It's a special building called the Box of Secrets, which I'm just going to go ahead and buy because I'm that rich. Well, let's go wow. ahead and enter it. Gordon actually did it. He brought a hero to the island. You're the first outsider in months to step into the Box of Secrets, where every item is a mystery and every purchase a surprise. Thanks to you, I've been able to restock my shelves, although there are still some things missing. At this point, though, she shouldn't be missing anything. You never know what you might find, though. You'll notice each package has a note telling you what exotic item you need to trade for it. So, so kind of giving a... Anyway. Sorry to interrupt, but kind of giving a, a brief summary of this place. Basically, what happens is, is that there's a bunch of very unique items here. And what happens is, is when you go up to it, you get a description of what you can get. You, you're told what item you need and how many you need. And you're also shown how many you have. Luckily for this sexy garment, I have a marriage and how to survive a book. And I went ahead and bought all the stuff already, so don't worry about that. But for this gift, we get the knot hole skirt. The first of many rewards. Though rarely seen on modern women, this is once the island's most ubiquitous shirt. And not just among the female population. <laughs> Good choice. That shirt will really accentuate your music. And yeah, your hero's gonna do that every time you open up one of these gifts. Kind of like a uh, celebration. Let me get out of this outfit. It just kind of looks weird on me. I don't know, I'm just... It just looks way too bulky for me, honestly. <laughs> Let's see. Alright, trying to remember... Alright, let me put on the assassin outfit and then just kind of clean up from there. Price of pants. Let's see, will user, I think. Ah, right, that's close enough. And those fire boots, alright. Alright, let's go ahead and continue on. With, uh, let's get this one first. A stylish accessory. We need one eternal love ring, which is a level 5 ring, I believe. And for this, we get the greaser wig. So you guys, yeah, the first wig, pretty, pretty much, I think. I don't know. This rather distinctive hairstyle was popularized by the great bard Billy Greaser, founding member of the Black Wheel Gang. And I think there is another wig out there in the game, I forget. You do know that wig once belonged to the great bard Billy Greaser, don't you? Yeah, we just figured I'm that sure out. I'm sure it would look great on you. All right, well, speaking of Billy Greaser... You get a rebellious costume for one pretty necklace, which I believe is a level 4 necklace. And it is the entire Black Wheel Gang outfit. The Black Wheel Gang were feared for the powers of necromancy. Though in truth, this was just a myth created by an older generation who did not care for their leather-intensive fashion and catchy, rebellious songs. <laughs> so this is essentially a biker I gang, Elvis-ish kind of outfit, if you're... Kind of wondering. They were a roaming group of necromantic warriors who sang a cappella lullabies during battle. Such an interesting story this place have. All right, the next item, murderous attire. We need two puny carrots, and for this we get the entire assassin outfit, including pants and shoes, which are no previously not available. Lurk in the shadows, live in the tangled, and silence your target. Saw your targets in silence. Blah blah blah. blah. We took this from an assassin who we think was sent to eliminate the chieftain. Unfortunately, he tripped over a pebble and impaled himself on a silver toothpick before he could do the job. Wow, this is fail written all over. Uh, well, hold on, let me go ahead and uh, uh, show off the entire outfit, because previously you can only get the assassin coat, but, uh, and, well, you just got the gauntlet from starting the DLC. And of course, with this gift now, we can finally have the pants and the shoes. Which were previously not available. So now the assassin outfit, which was available at the start in Fable, we now finally have. The skimming on a lovely hairdo for two table wines. We have six, and it is the cascading hairstyle. It's a nice little card there. Let's see what could be more attractive than that hairy waterfall. <laughs> that hairdo was very popular with the island's first female settlers, but the local birds started nesting in them. So it sort of fell out of fashion. Seems legit. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, here's where it starts getting good. A saintly weapon. We need a pair of. Uh, I mean, we need just one monk's robe for this, which you can find in Oakfield. And it is a legendary cutlass, the Judge's Steel. 
which is essentially a powerful version of the Vicey Scent. The Omni in this weapon causes it to inflict greater damage on evil supernatural beings such as Banshees and Hollow Men. Not much is known of the figure most called the White Judge, only that he sought out wrongdoings wherever he went and spared no one in order to right them. No sword has struck down more evil or dealt such brutal justice. So you can kind of consider this as a, as I was saying, a more powerful version of the rising sun that we got from the Temple of Light. Who battled evil wherever he went. All I know is that it washed up ashore when my grandmother was just a little girl. So yeah, we don't really know much about the White Judge. Anyways, barbaric garments. We need two of Murgo's Big Book of Trading. And we got the Brodation Warrior Queen outfit. The Brodations were a race of warriors who roamed the world as conquerors and barbarians, but were mostly known for their politeness. They were nevertheless fierce in battle. Oh, okay. I put that there outfit together after a marauding army of barbarians invaded the island some years back. Nice folk, actually. They mostly just wanted to have a quiet chat over a cup of tea. <laughs> And Fable shows off its humor once again. Well, here, let me go ahead and start showing off some of these outfits, I suppose. I mean, I suppose you people are going to wonder what they are anyways. Let's see. Let's go to the, uh... I don't know what is that? Alright, um... Oh, shoot. The code's covering it up. Ah! Let's see. Where is it? No clothes, alright. Well, let me go ahead and show off another one first, I suppose. Uh, the first one that we actually got, the Black Wheel Gang outfit. And Jesus Christ, that really accentuates my bust. And you can even see the kind of tattoos, too. That's kind of provocative. Uh, I should probably take it off before I get this flag for something. <laughs> alright, well, that's that. Uh, let's see, no clothes. And let's try out the, uh, let's see. Now let's try with the Bredation Warrior Queen. So, kind of a barbaric kind of outfit. Kind of reminds me of Hammer, to be honest. Alright, but let's continue on. A strong-willed weapon. We need a diamond for this. And we get the legendary mace, the Staff of Wrath. And I love this description for this one. Uh, the argument in this set protects you from scarring and some of the damage you receive. When will you just get angry, they cast their most fearsome spells. When they get really, really angry, they bludgeon their enemies to a pulp using this old-fashioned stick. <laughs> Yay, violence! And I can't hear. Humor, if I'm not mistaken. Can't get more magical than that. Oh, Spike, you poor thing. <laughs> Alright, now here is a very interesting weapon, the rare range weapon. You need a pure experience extract for this. And it is Hal's rifle. A legendary rifle. But if you notice something about this rifle, it looks suspiciously similar to the assault rifle from Halo. Well, let's go ahead and uh, read the description, I suppose. Long ago, when the Albion was still under the rule of the Old Kingdom, a rift in space opened a portal between dimensions. Through the rift stepped a warrior of immense power, clad in green armor and carrying a striking crystal sword. Although he never revealed his na real name, he was known to all as Hal. Few of his enemies were able to withstand the firepower of this sophisticated rifle. Now, the interesting thing about this is that... If you had bought the limited edition version of Fable 2 when it came out, two of the items that you would have received were Hal's armor and Hal's crystal sword. Which were essentially what you think of them. Fable equivalents of Master Chief. And showing off this rifle real quick. I don't know if you can see it, but that little thing in the center is supposed to show the ammo. It's actually an infinity sign in this game because, well, there is no ammo. And you can see this is a very powerful weapon. You get a lot of shots of before you have to reload. A very, very useful weapon. But anyways, vile attire, crucible peanuts, we need two of them. And we get the chasm outfit, one of the creepiest outfits in the game. Worshippers of the chasm forged an evil sect who believed the world would one day be sucked into an abyss, where true believers like them would rule forever. The fighters among them wore this outfit as they spread terror wherever they went. Figure wearing this outfit appeared one day in the center of town and started to curse everyone in a strange tongue. A hunter threw a harpoon in his neck before he could finish, <laughs> so it was okay. <laughs> kind of seems a bit overkill, don't you think? Well, let's go ahead and show off the outfit real quick. I want to say it reminds me of something cool, but I can't remember. Let's see. No, 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 no. There we are. Alright, so very... Man, my... 
I really, really look fat in that. Well, like the top port, anyways. But you see, that kind of looks ironic. But anyways, barbaric weapon. We need a regal purple die. This is probably the hardest of the weapons to get, mainly because regal purple die is probably the rarest item in the game. You can only find it with clothing traders in Fairfax Gardens, and even then, it's kind of rare. Or traveling traders. But anyways, we get the Bordation Mace. The Bordations were a race of warriors who roamed the world as conquerors and barbarians, blah blah blah. There weren't many people who could argue with them anyways when they caught the sight of the vicious bludgeoning weapons they used. One of the warriors from the barbarian army who invaded the island a couple of years ago left that weapon as an apology for trampling a flower bed. Aww. <laughs> Damn, they really are pretty, pretty polite. And, um, well, let me see. Let's go ahead and... Uh, well, never mind. An evil weapon? We need three crunchy chicks. And we get the Retcher's Blade. Probably the coolest blade that you get out of this entire thing. It's a cutlass, too, for some reason. Anyways, the augment in this weapon causes it to inflict greater damage on lawful beings, such as Garden Citizens. Ava Retcher was renowned for her vicious nature and ferocity in combat. Obsessed more with her reputation than gold or power, she traveled the world in search of new challenges. More often than not, these involve decapitating scores of innocents. <laughs> So this is essentially the upgraded version of the Maelstrom Sword. She killed half the village on her way to test her skills at the three weather shrines. I'm glad to say she didn't make it out of the last one. <laughs> Too bad we didn't find her body in there. All right, let me go ahead and get this outfit off. It's kind of bad looking. Eh. All right, let's go back to assassin outfit. There we are. Nice and black again. And finally, a weapon of note. We need two loots for this. And we get the Axe of Disharmony, which is actually registered as a loot, but it is a weapon. <laughs> this is hilarious. But anyways, originally built by Gordon, not whole island's foremost inventor, as an instrument to make a completely new and unique kind of music. It proved more useful as a weapon. Its whack to the head knee minor was particularly effective. <laughs> <laughs> so cruel. <laughs> he wanted to create a unique musical instrument. It sounded so bad, he decided to turn it into a weapon instead. Sounds legit. But anyways, with that... Well, it's official. You have everything. I'm just glad all my best items ended up in your hands. Nobody deserves them more. I better start thinking of what else to do now. But that's the end of the box of secrets. I've gotten everything I need. But now there's one more thing I need to show you guys. It involves switching to a different file. Specifically this file. Yeah, I'm in the chasm map, so you can't really recognize what this is. But this is actually the original file that I had for this game. The original Corona. And still mailed too, as I haven't gotten through the Castle Fairfax. I just kind of... I went through the game, though, because if you'll notice, I don't have a dog with me. I went ahead and did one of the other endings. Um, you can probably take a guess at which one, based off the outfit. But, um, basically, you can only do this last item if you did either the good ending, a.k.a. the sacrifice, or the bad ending, a.k.a., you know, wealth, you know, the you know, million gold and stuff like that. And what you'll find is if you go to the graveyard over here... This little tomb will suddenly open up, and if you had a guy following you, they will enter the tomb. But anyways, let's look at this. Cheater's Crypt. This crypt once, uh, only appears to those who have lost a beloved four-legged friend. To bring your dog back from the canine afterlife, you must lead a human sacrifice to the crypt. Cheater, one of the most powerful mages among the first settlers of the island, was a no well-known dog lover. He was rather less fun of his fellow humans, though. <laughs> So anyways, you can see the guy has entered the crypt, and, um, well, truth be told, I honestly have never done this before, so I don't really know how to activate this. In fact, I thought this was a dungeon at first, but I did some research later on, but, um, let's see, is there, is there something nearby that I need to do? Let's see. Um, oh, there's a switch. All right, pull the lever to offer a sacrifice to Cheater's Crypt. Yes. Bye-bye, person. And so the guy gets zapped, and out comes... Something that you can't really see, but it's our dog! He's back from the afterlife, and he's black now. He's really black, seriously. And right away, he t picks up a dig spot. So if you lost your dog during the final moments of the game, 
This is pretty much the way to get him back. And there's no other time that your dog dies, so your dog stays back. So that's nice. A uh, bow wow collar. Well, it's a bow tie. But anyways, this is Gagrish 9, and this has officially been Nahol Island. There's nothing left I can show you for this DLC, so until the next DLC, I will see you later for more Fable Capades and Doggy. <laughs> I'll see you then, guys.